Well, g'day from Jarrah country. Do we have a story for you? But before we begin, please take a moment to subscribe to our website if you haven't already. So if we are deplatformed here, you can continue to engage with our work. Head to artistasfamily.is and click on the subscribe tab. This week, we take a look at the wonderful world of vitamin D, where it comes from, how it is made, and why treating vitamin D deficiency is critically important for COVID era health. But before we get into that, what is vitamin D? Vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin that is made by having contact with the sun. It exists in two main forms, vitamin D2 and vitamin D3. Basically D3 is produced in animals, including we humans, and D2 mostly comes from plants. Before COVID, some scientists referred to vitamin D deficiency as being akin to a pandemic itself. A chronic lack of vitamin D is attributed to innumerable health pathologies and comorbidities like diabetes types 1 and 2, obesity, kidney failure, colon cancer and heart disease. Vitamin D also regulates immune system responses, so it's fairly important to get levels right at any time, but especially in a global pandemic. There are three main ways to prevent vitamin D deficiency. Eating D-rich foods such as butter, fish oil, liver and egg yolks, taking vitamin D supplements or our main go-to, living outdoors as much as we can and getting goodly amounts of natural sunlight on our skin. Praise to the sun. Most of our body's vitamin D requirements can come from ultraviolet B light or UVB exposure. Our skin produces vitamin D when it's exposed to UVB. And because it is fat soluble, we can store it for less sunny times. This is very different to vitamin C, which passes through the body fairly rapidly, as we discovered in our Megadose Vitamin C video, which we made with the delightful Dr. Peter Cootie. So, if you live much of your life indoors, cover up too much when you're outside, and live in a high latitude, then you probably need to supplement or seek out D-rich foods. But if you spend a goodly amount of time outside, your skin will more than likely produce all the vitamin D you require from UVB. Getting enough direct sunlight on your skin for vitamin D production, but not too much direct sunlight as to produce skin cancer, is a dance depending on your skin type. Skin pigmentation matters with regards to vitamin D production. Ancestors from equatorial regions develop darker skin to protect themselves from intense sunlight. The darker your skin, the slower the absorption of vitamin D because of the sun protective covering of melanin. Vitamin D deficiency occurs mostly in people living in higher latitudes, especially those whose skin has higher concentrations of melanin. Increasingly, we have heard how vitamin D can play a significant protective role against SARS-CoV-2. Dr. John Campbell, a British medical teacher asks, why haven't we had a large scale interventional trial on something that is so efficacious and so cheap as vitamin D? He goes on to say that there's no money in it for the pharmaceutical industry, but asks, why governments aren't researching this, of course, is a completely different question. Governments should be researching this and publishing the data and advising the populations accordingly. Dr. Campbell examines closely this recent article which details how vitamin D3 has a protective role against acute respiratory disease syndrome caused by SARS-CoV-2, and there are low vitamin D levels in cases of severe infection. The article also states, the data sets provide strong evidence that low vitamin D3 is a predictor rather than just a side effect of the infection. The authors lament that obsolete warnings about vitamin D overdoses are still circulating, even among doctors. And they report that vitamin D deficiency reduces the efficacy of the immune system and, for those who have had vaccines, it reduces their effectiveness. The authors go on to argue, if everyone's vitamin D levels lie at a minimum of 50 nanograms per milliliter, it would save most lives affected by COVID reducing the impact even for patients with various comorbidities such as diabetes 1 and 2 and obesity. Wow, just bloody wow. Wow. Evolutionary biologist Heather Heyer's recent article, Vitamin D Deficiency in COVID-19, backs these findings up. She surveys numerous articles that address the subject and effectively says they are overwhelmingly 
in favour of vitamin D being a meaningful deployment against SARS-CoV-2. She states, there is growing evidence that vitamin D functions in regulating the immune system, has many antiviral properties, and that supplementation with it provides protection against many respiratory infections. Heather's article led us to this one, published in late 2020, in which the author states, The risk groups for severe COVID-19 match the risk groups for vitamin D deficiency exactly, and there is biological plausibility. Vitamin D is known to modulate the immune system, helping prevent both an underreaction that allows upper respiratory infections to be contracted, and the overreaction referred to in COVID-19 as the cytokine storm. Prevention in modern medicine always seems to be of lesser importance. Brett Weinstein, Heather's partner, also an evolutionary biologist, makes this summation about vitamin D as a legitimate prophylactic and treatment for COVID. The, the likelihood that you are D deficient is incredibly high. The number of things that D seems to be protective of is incredibly large. The harm to you if you raise your D levels and it somehow turned out that D was a third correlate and not causal is so low. The cost of the stuff is very cheap. The danger of taking way too much of it is very low mm -hmm. and um, the potential benefit is sky high. And so the point is you might as well but then the real import of that is to the extent that our public health authorities are not recommending this, have not been recommending it throughout the pandemic, you know that they are either incompetent at a level that strains credulity or not interested in health. And until they change their tune on this, I think one has to look at everything they say with a kind of skepticism. How do I know this person is actually interested in my health the way they claim to be if they are not picking the lowest hanging fruit on the tree, which is vitamin D? Um, and, you know, that's a jaw dropping thing to say. Public health officials who aren't interested in, in health, public or otherwise, uh, that's a remarkable claim. On the other hand, how else are we to explain their total silence on vitamin D? So how do we explain the radio silence on vitamin D benefits from health officials? In a 2017 Victorian government health report on vitamin D deficiency, the authors state, low vitamin D levels have been associated with multiple sclerosis, diabetes type one and two, various types of cancers, particularly colon cancer, cardiovascular disease, mental health conditions, all-cause mortality, altered immunity, and autoimmune diseases. To date, however, they say, a causal relationship has not been established. Well, that report was four years ago. The literature has been ever-expanding since, and yet it hasn't been updated in any government agency in Victoria or Australia, as far as we can see, anyway. A 2016 article called Vitamin D Deficiency in Europe, Pandemic, concludes that vitamin D deficiency is evident throughout the European population at prevalence rates that are concerning and that require action from a public health perspective. What direction these strategies take will depend on European policy but should aim to ensure vitamin D intakes that are protective against vitamin D deficiency in the majority of the European population. Now let's briefly look at COVID deaths, cases and vaccination rates in the low UVB continent of Europe, where there's a well-documented vitamin D deficiency crisis. And let's now compare this to the high UVB continent of Africa, where there is no known vitamin D deficiency epidemic despite a majority population whose skin contain high levels of melanin. COVID deaths in Africa are just 161 per million people, compared with Europe's staggering 1,800 plus deaths per million. And yet in Africa, less than 7% of the entire population is fully vaccinated, compared with Europe's almost 60%. Apart from greater access to sunlight, another contributing factor, no doubt, is Africa's median age population, which is young by comparison to Europe's. 
But whatever the metric we use to study Africa's COVID success story, it is clear it has little to do with the vaccination program and most likely much to do with high levels of UVB and other factors, which we explored in our video, Indigenous versus Industrial COVID, a comparison between two countries. For people of African descent living in higher latitudes, it is a completely different story. A report from the Mayo Clinic alerts that vitamin D deficiency is common in the United States, particularly among Hispanic and black people. These groups have been disproportionately affected by COVID-19. So in summary, UVB makes a big difference to the COVID story and in treating vitamin D deficiency would more than likely have a greater impact on reducing COVID transmission, cases, hospitalizations and death than anything else currently available. It is remarkable that vitamin D, alongside megadose vitamin C, zinc and quercetin combinations, have not been recommended over the past two years by government health officials as prophylactics for early treatment or for after vaccination care. We look forward to this picture radically changing and governments transitioning from their vaccine only policies. Well, that's the update for this week. If you'd like to help support our work, please head to our website, artistersfamily.is and click on the support tab.